So hello, good evening. My name is Jeanette. Nice to meet you if we haven't met yet. Uh, I am a certified nutritional practitioner and uh, one of the educators for Iron Vegan. I'm really excited to be chatting tonight um, with you all about plant-powered living. I am just getting some messages in from my team, so I'm just going to try one more time to see if there is an option for me to turn on the chat for you but I do not see that on my end. So I'm gonna um, have to leave it for now because we wanna make sure we can get into this really good information and make sure that you leave after the hour with a little bit more empowerment and understanding about how great plants are and how they can really support you in your life and in your endeavors. So first of all, if you're new to the brand, if you're new to really what Iron Vegan is and, and, and you know what we're all about, you know, essentially for us, and one of the reasons why I love the brand so much is that all of us here that work for Iron Vegan, we are the adventure seekers. We're the ones that also, you know, research every single ingredient. We're pretty obsessed with eating well, supporting our families, and every formula that you see coming uh, to Healthy Planet and to, uh, you know, your, your health food stores are really designed to support you for wherever you are at in your life's journey. So the thing that I really love about Iron Vegan is that it is all whole food based. So when you go, you know, to the aisle and Healthy Planet, you pick up a product and you turn it around and you look at the ingredients, you're going to understand, first of all, which, what each of those ingredients are. And today we're really going to be diving into the research behind those ingredients, why they are in our formulas. So I really want you to be able to leave this webinar with an understanding of how conscious plant-based eating can connect you to your health and wellness goals and really support your lifestyle. You know, there's so many um, avenues of research when it comes to living a plant-based lifestyle. And what I will say just at the top of this presentation here is that although, you know, the term vegan is in our name, we are Iron Vegan, we do not subscribe to just those who follow a strictly vegan diet. So for myself, I would consider, you know, me a little bit more plant forward. I eat a lot of plants. I have followed a strictly plant-based diet in the past, but now I'm a little bit more versatile in what I actually bring into my kitchen and what I put on my plate. With that, uh, though, it is, you know, really important to understand that adding plants into our diet can be incredibly beneficial, as long as we're paying attention to how our bodies are feeling and that we're doing proper preparation methods. Now, when we do look at the research, you know, it does show that plant based diets are cost effective, low risk interventions that can really benefit a wide array of health issues. But what we're seeing, you know, predominantly is relating back to inflammation. Now, reducing inflammation is such a great way to support your personal health, your longevity, and also just improve how you feel in your body. Now, another area of research that we're seeing uh, really the plant-based uh, community diving into is with regards to reducing and lowering BMI. So as a nutritionist, you know, one of the primary goals I hear in my nutrition practice is with regards to weight loss. Now, although I myself do not subscribe to an all, you know, a one diet fits all, increasing really the number of plants that reach your plate is a really fantastic way to start. In addition, for a lot of people, as they're looking to go or really explore the plant forward diet and just including more plants in general, a lot of uh, the why behind it is with regards to supporting the planet and some environmental efforts. Now, you know, there's of course numerous studies that really look at, you know, the benefits of plant-based diets on the, on the environment, on the economy, um, in different countries around the world. Now, one study in particular that I was looking at looked at the difference in the natural resources used to support a meat-based diet versus a plant-based one. And although this was a small snapshot, it did show less resources like energy, land, and water that were used to support the plant-based diet. Now, before we go any further, again, today we're all talking about really using plants and, and really looking at that plant-forward lifestyle as a way to support you and to support your goals. So if you can just take a moment and really think about your goals, think about you know, those dreams and ambitions that you've had. So I'm just gonna let you take that for a second there. Now, what I hear a lot in my personal practice is people are coming in and they're really looking for 
better energy. They want to feel better in their body. They want to feel better in their minds. Essentially, it's all about supporting themselves so that they can also show up as their best selves for their families, for their coworkers, and for their friends. Now, when we think about those goals, what areas do you really need further support in to be able to reach them? Because we all need further support. And, you know, no matter what your day looks like, whether you are, you know, a pro athlete or you are a professional Zoom meeting, marathon goer, you know, our needs are all the same. We all need adequate energy, proper recovery, and everyday fuel. Now, if we think about things that are preventing us from reaching our goals, the three main things that I see a lot in practice showing up is number one, stressful lifestyle. I don't know who, uh, you know, coined the term that we're just working, you know, this, this nine to five and, you know, it's all about living to work. Well, you know, I think for a lot of us, we need to be able to shift that perspective. So yes, stress is going to be a part of our everyday life. Stress is a part of the human experience, but it's all about how we perceive the stress, how we process through the stress and what tools we may be using to help support our nervous system as we, when we are going through stressful situations. Number two is not prioritizing nutrition and really either not having the time or not really having the know-how on how to put together nutritious recipes or nutritious combinations. And then lastly is again about that knowledge piece is not really knowing what supplements or superfoods will help. Maybe you found yourself in the health food store one day and you're seeing, you know, all of these superfoods in the aisle and all these different protein powders and, you know, things that could help you, but you don't really know how to be putting these combinations together or what's really going to work best with your body and your needs. Well, thankfully today, I mean, this is really what we're going to be chatting about. So you're going to walk away really knowing what's going to work best for your system uh, and, and your goals as well. So I just want to go over a couple uh, examples of typical people that we chat with, you know, all the time, because, you know, we get emails in from customers just like you, um, and especially, you know, um, us as nutritionists and naturopaths, part of the education team, we're always, you know, really bringing our, our clinical um examples and clinical experiences to these educational seminars too. So number one, I want you to meet Jill. So Jill works 40 hours per week. You know, many days are spent in back-to-back -back Zoom meetings. You know, for Jill, her favorite physical activity is getting out there and walking her dog or playing with her kids at the park. And she does really like to go for a jog about two to three times per week. Next, I want you to meet Joe. So Joe is an endurance athlete. He cycles about 40 kilometers a day. Right now he is training for some fall races. He loves the outdoors and he swims regularly on the weekend. Now, although Jill and Joe's lifestyles are different, they both really need the same foundations. They need solid nutrition to support their brain health as well as their physical endeavors. They need proper hydration, and they also need mindfulness practices to help shift from that work mode to rest mode. So beyond that, they can really be looking at additional support nutrients, whether that be superfoods or protein powders, to really help them hone in and achieve those goals that they're looking for. So bringing it back to this slide, you know, the three areas that we all need support in, energy, I will say, is probably the number one issue that I hear from people, you know, coast to coast. So many people are living their days in this burnt out state. And so they're really just relying on these quick fixes to get them from point A to point B, to wake them up in the morning, to get them to work, uh, and then to probably help push them to whatever activities they have after work. So, you know, I'd love, you know, for you again to reflect just what's like your go-to for an energy boost. You know, for so many people, they are really big coffee fans. I definitely subscribe to being a coffee fan and, and there can be some really good benefits about with coffee, but we do have to be careful on how it can impact us and how it can really impact our nervous system in particular. Some other examples could be things like sugary drinks sport energizers and then you know other things would be those easily digestible like quick energy foods so for some people it could be something that's really sweet like candy it could be a fruit um, for others it could be something more carby so like plain like some some bread some crackers popcorn those types of things that just kind of give us that boost that we need you know we feel a little bit better and then we can go on
Now, the things that we have to realize is that although there's, you know, no, no problem having these, you know, once in a while, if it's something that we're always going back to and we're always relying on, you know, energizers or something with a lot of sugar in it to really boost us up, that can also be really, you know, taking away from our natural reserves and, and really taking away from our health. So there are some beautiful natural plant energizers that we can rely on and can really help support us not only for better performance, but also for better resilience through those times of stress. Now, let's just look at some interesting research on some of these natural energizers. So cordyceps are definitely one of my favorite mushrooms. They've been studied for their energy boosting effects for a very long time. And it does seem that mushrooms are certainly still that it's superfood right now. And a big reason is really due to their adaptogenic properties. So if that's a new term for you, adaptogens, Simply put, they help us adapt to stress. They're smart substances which can really work with our existing state of health to help us better deal with environmental, physical, as well as mental stress factors. Now, according to Health Canada, some mushrooms are used in herbal medicine as potent adaptogens to help increase energy as well as improve our resistance to stress. That's pretty powerful there. <laughs> Rishi definitely fits into that medicinal mushroom category as well. Now, maca root is another one that I think, you know, could really be used a little bit more, especially uh, for North Americans. Maca is such a fantastic root and can be really mixed into different blends, but it's consumed both as a sports supplement by strength endurance athletes and as a natural stimulant to enhance energy and also sexual drive. And then lastly, we have astragalus root here. Now astragalus, I feel, is a bit of a lesser known of the adaptogens, but it's actually one of the most important key or energy tonifying uh, adaptogenic herbs in traditional Chinese medicine and has a really long history of medicinal use. Now, the thing that I love about Iron Vegan's New Balanced Energy is that it includes all of these adaptogens in one formula. So it's really designed to support energy output as well as combat mental fatigue at a foundational level. It doesn't have any of those sugar alcohols or artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. It's just the, those foundational nutrients that I talked about. And then it comes in two different flavors. So we have our iced tea lemonade, which is really great mixed with water and ice, drink that on a hot day, or if you're just wanting something refreshing to drink at when you're at your desk for work. Uh, and then it also comes in our roasted coffee flavor. So I know some people will actually mix this one into smoothies to make more of a, a coffee flavor or mocha flavor smoothie, or you can also just drink this mixed with water. Um, and you can also add it to your coffee too. So lots of benefits for these two here. Um, the key benefits and claims really does revolve around helping to improve energy, combating mental fatigue, and uh, being a source of adaptogens. Now, if energy is really what we want, we need to ensure that we are supporting ourselves effectively. So how do you ensure you can show up as your best? Now, I, I think the chat function is still disabled right now, and I do apologize. So again, just you know, reflect on that for us. Now, for me, and, and really when I think about, you know, working with my clients, when we're thinking about long-term support and long-term energy building and really, you know, setting yourself up in such a way that when you wake up in the morning, you have enough of that energy to show up for the activities that you want to do. We need to make sure that you're recovering and resting effectively. There's so much medicine in rest and there's so much medicine in really nourishing ourselves so that our bodies are able to recover in a timely manner. Now, looking back at the key areas that we all need further support in, you know, for true holistic health, recovery must be just as much of a priority as boosting energy. Now, like I said before, whether you are, a, you know, a marathon runner or you are in marathon Zoom meetings, we, in both these cases, we need that recovery support. So what happens when you don't fully recover? So just, you know, think about this, see if this resonates with you for a minute. You know, we push our bodies and minds every day from work to the gym. We're really asking a lot from our bodies. And when we push our bodies and our minds without allowing for that rest and recovery, we can slowly begin to approach burnout. So when recovery is not prioritized, it can really make it difficult to continue to ask your body to perform. 
Now, what we hear from you and our community is that when you don't give your body the chance to recover, you may start the day feeling tired, unmotivated, and sometimes physically sore. So how many of you have seen this graph before? What you see here is a, called the human function curve. And as you can see, there's good stress on the left-hand side of your screen and then distress on the right. Now, good stress could be a myriad of things, right? It could be starting a new job, planning a wedding. At this point, when you have good stress entering your stratosphere, I think we all know what that good stress feels like. You're excited, you have more energy, your brain and body is more alert. And at this time, you know, you're, you're really being primed for better performance output. Now, the problem is that us as humans, we are not wired to be in that stress state for a prolonged period of time. It's okay if it's short, it's okay if it's acute, but if it's going on for a prolonged period, this is when we can start to see issues arise. So an example that I hear a lot of is that, you know, we start that new job, we get really excited, and then all of a sudden the work starts to pile up. And maybe we have a family incident happen or something is happening with our outside relationships. At this point, the stress is really starting to move us out of our comfort zone. And it becomes at a level that we're really not able to regulate our nervous system or regulate our stress response effectively. This is when you might start to wake up in the morning and just feeling really tired. You're dragging your feet, but you're still showing up and you're doing it. The problem happens if you continue on this cycle for a prolonged period of time, this is when burnout can start to show up in our lives. And so we really want to be nourishing ourselves and really bringing in some, you know, holistic health modalities here to ensure that we're not pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone all of the time, that we're not really pushing ourselves from that good stress to distress. So you know, aside from creating good boundaries, what can we lean on for support when we are feeling stressed? So, you know, there is obviously a lot of different holistic support that we can be integrating into our busy lifestyles and really implementing those non-negotiable self-care practices. So scheduling in time for rest, eating a healthy diet, drinking enough water, as well as creating space for connection, like joining a rec league or volunteering, saying yes to that lunch date, and then shifting your perspective, because cynicism can also be incredibly exhausting and can keep us in that distressed state of mind. So really looking for the positives in life whenever possible can be incredibly helpful. Now, another great tool for, you know, really just implementing time for mindfulness is box breathing. Maybe you've heard this before, maybe not, but box breathing has been used in the army with Olympic athletes and with people around the world. It's a really simple and effective practice that you can do anywhere. So we don't have time to do an entire box breathing practice right now, but very simply put, it's in counts of four. So at, imagine your mind is really creating a square in front of you. So you breathe in for four, you hold for four, you release for four, and then you breathe in for four. And you do that again and again, you know, four to 10 times, one to two minutes, whatever you know, amount of time that you have for yourself, try it out. You can try it out while we finish this webinar today and then let me know afterwards how you feel. So, you know, aside from box breathing, there's also some key superfoods that we can really lean on for that additional support. One of my favorites is holy basil. So Holy basil, also known as Tulsi, comes to us from India and is a really fantastic herb to support our nervous system, especially when we are dealing with times of stress. Tart cherry is one of those nutrients that, you know, it has very strong anti-inflammatory properties for, you know, anyone that's been in the sports nutrition field for a while or, you know, kind of lives in that world. You've probably seen tart cherry in different supplements. It's really good for just bringing down inflammation and really helping that recovery process. Ashwagandha is probably one of the more well-known uh, adaptogens that help us adapt with stress. The cool thing about ashwagandha is that not only does it help us um, with regards to stress and helping really prime our nervous system for that, it's also been studied with regards to sports nutrition and really how well our body is able to adapt to different strength-based exercises. 
And then there's turmeric. So turmeric, another really great herb, very well known uh, for its anti-inflammatory action. And turmeric itself has been studied really in depth for its benefit towards um, reducing delayed onset muscle soreness. So whether you are, you know, much like me and working at a desk for many hours out of the day, sometimes your back can really take a lot of strain um, or perhaps you're going to the gym and you're really pushing yourselves you're going for those really long bike rides and you're you know doing that whole building muscle process when we really push our bodies in these different ways bringing in some anti-inflammatory herbs and some adaptogens can be incredibly effective and incredibly nourishing when we are going through those periods of stress so Iron Vegan Recovery Blend is something that yeah, I've actually been using since it came out almost, I would say like nine to 10 months ago. It's one of my favorite blends uh, that Iron Vegan has come out with. And really, you know, of all the sleep blends and rest blends that are out there, this is definitely one of my favorites. So it tastes very delicious. You can mix it just with water. Um, sometimes I will add ice to it. Um, I know other people will add it to smoothies, but I, I just like it on its own when I'm doing yoga at the end of the night. It's probably one of my, you know, most favorite things that I look forward to, especially after a webinar that's, uh, you know, happening after dinner. So the benefits of our recovery blend are that it, it does help to promote relaxation, it helps to relieve inflammation in the body, and it includes those um, very great antioxidants as well as anti-inflammatories like tart cherry and turmeric. Now moving forward from energy and repair, we also need quality daily fuel, because what you consume on a regular basis can have a dramatic effect on your daily energy levels as well as your everyday health. So let's finish up by speaking about fuel. Now, one question that we hear a lot is that there are such large differences in amino acid content and amino acid composition between various plant-based protein sources. So combinations of various plant-based protein sources may provide the protein characteristics that actually closely reflect the typical characteristics of animal-based protein. I know that was a bit of a mouthful, but essentially the question is, you know, is plant-based protein enough? And I will say yes, because when we look at the plant uh, protein content percentages, for, you know, many of them, they actually stack up very closely to animal base and even human muscle, as you can see on this slide here. Um, for this slide, we're looking at various protein content percentages from various sources. And as you can see, brown rice and pea are actually on par with whey and even human muscle. So, you know, there are so many myths when it comes to plant-based protein, you know, and before we really go any further, we should probably address these. Uh, so number one is about taste. So plant-based protein, it just, it doesn't taste good. It's gritty. Uh, and I can say that, you know, there was a time when plant-based protein was new to the market. Again, this was probably a decade ago, and it was one of the first times I ever tried just a plain hemp protein on its own. And yeah, for sure, that did not taste good. And yes, it was gritty. But you know, manufacturers have come, you know, so far and away from that time. And, you know, things have certainly changed a lot. And when we think about iron vegan, that's one of the things that we always hear about is just how delicious the protein is, how smooth it is, how easy it is to incorporate into different recipes. The second myth is that plant-based proteins do not contain the full spectrum of amino acids, they are incomplete. Well, the thing that we have to remember is that, first of all, our human body itself is quite intelligent. So when you are eating a variety of plants throughout the day, because you cannot tell me that you just eat one plant and stick to that one plant for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I've never heard of that before. So when we eat a variety of them, we are able to pull amino acids from the various plant sources, and then create complete proteins within our bodies to really provide ourselves with that full spectrum of amino acids. Next is that they are hard to digest. So plant-based proteins are hard to digest and they can be gas forming. Again, a lot of this does come down to how the plant was prepared, so how it was cooked, how it was formulated, because yes, you know, plants do contain something called anti-nutrients. They contain lectins and tannins um, and even something like gluten, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. And these things can, you know, wreak havoc sometimes within our digestive system. But with specific preparation, 
methods like sprouting and fermenting, we're actually able to drastically reduce the amount of anti-nutrients within the plants. And therefore it's gonna be a lot easier for our bodies to digest and then assimilate those nutrients. And then lastly is about poor performance. So plant-based proteins don't provide the performance results in muscle growth and size. And I can say without a doubt, I have some research to share with you, but there is so much amazing research really comparing the difference or lack of, of using plant-based protein versus whey and really seeing the benefits in the athletes themselves. So sprouting is something that I mentioned here, and that's because sprouting is such a fantastic way to, first of all, improve the nutrient uh, quantity as well as quality of the plant, and secondly, to reduce those anti-nutrients or really those inhibitors for us when we are looking at helping the body to digest and then assimilate the nutrients from the plants. Now, this is a great uh, quote from one of my favorite plant-based authors, Sarah Britton from My New Roots. And what she says with regards to sprouting is that every seed is dormant until the conditions are in place for it to become a plant. If you take a sunflower seed and just eat it, you're actually eating a locked up plant. When you soak it, you're telling it that it's about to become an entire plant because of all the nutrients to become that are inside, but they're asleep until you soak it. So when you soak it, you're initiating the growing process and awakening the nutrition. And I think that's such a beautiful way to really illustrate, you know, how sprouting works, you know, in a more, um, you know, uh, less scientific way. But when we do look at the science and we do look at the research, we know that sprouting helps to unlock so much within the plant. It actually increases the minerals that are available. The vitamins, especially B vitamins, become much more bioavailable. The phytochemicals like sulforaphane, which is so fantastic for liver health. It also increases the amino acids that are available. And when we increase the amino acid availability, we're also increasing the protein. And fermentation is another great way to help break down our nutrients in food, really making them easier to digest than their unfermented counterparts. As I mentioned, fermentation reduces something called anti-nutrients. So things like phytic acid, lectins, and tannins, all of these things can really cause digestive upsets, which is why sometimes when people start to you know, increase their plant intake, they may start to feel a little gassy or a little bloated. Oftentimes we have to look at how are they actually preparing the plants? So fermentation uh, can really, really help with this. And it does so because it helps to improve the digestion of the proteins and the carbs within the plant themselves. So through the fermentation process, fermentative microbes, which are essentially released into the plant, produce enzymes that help digest the proteins, the carbs, and the fiber. And at the same time, it's actually lowering the flattest producing carbohydrate. So you're not going to be producing as much gas. So fermentation improves the nutritional quality of food very similarly to sprouting, but it goes a little bit further. It does increase the biological availability of our essential amino acids like lysine and arginine. It also increases the bioavailability of minerals by reducing anti-nutrients like phytic acid. It increases the B group vitamins and increases antioxidant capacity. So when you are looking for a plant-based protein, this is my checklist that I use for clients and also for myself. I wanna make sure that the protein is sprouted, it's been bacterially fermented, it's good tasting, and it's gluten-free and non-GMO. And this is why I love Iron Vegan because it's just that, and it's also just real food. So let's just look at our sprouted protein start with. Um, so what we have here is our um, spreaded protein blend, which is a mix of organic spreaded brown rice, organic spreaded and fermented quinoa, amaranth, millet, and pumpkin seed. So we're really taking the guesswork out of your protein intake by having this combination of proteins available to really provide that easily digestible plant protein. So one scoop of our sprouted protein provides 90 calories, 22 grams of protein, three grams of fiber, and one gram of fat. And it's organic ingredients, it's sprouted, and it's really that smooth and delicious flavor. And what people really love is that you can be using sprouted protein in a myriad of recipes. It doesn't just have to be smoothies. So if you actually go to ironvegan.ca, you can see all of the great recipes that are out there. But one that I wanted to share tonight is uh, one by our lovely 
Chef Ivan, who does so many cool things with our protein, uh, and he made jalapeno biscuits. So again, it's something that you wouldn't necessarily consider adding a plant-based protein to, but if you do have someone in your life that is maybe new to following a plant-forward diet, um, or perhaps they're just having trouble getting enough protein in in the day, um, whether it's you know due to food aversions or food allergies, doing something like this and finding creative ways to add in a really easily digestible protein can do a lot of good for their health. So our sprouted protein is available in chocolate, vanilla, caramel, as well as unflavored. Now, for those of you that are, you know, uh, within the sports nutrition mind, and you're really looking to support your body even more, then I encourage you to check out Iron Vegan's Athletes Blend, because it's really been designed to help support that new generation of athletes. So when Iron Vegan, you know, first came to market, that was one of their main missions was to really shake up the sports nutrition field, come up with some really nutritious, easily digestible uh, proteins that we're going to work for those plant-based athletes. So really staying true to our, all of our Iron Vegan values here. And, you know, um, until Iron Vegan Athletes Blend, you know, there really hasn't been a product that was truly designed for that vegan athlete. So when we're comparing the two, the, uh, the sprouted protein and the athlete's blend, we've essentially increased the protein from 17 grams in the sprouted protein to put 30 grams in the iron vegan athlete's blend. We've added in specific key nutrients like glutamine, branch chain amino acids, taurine, zinc, beetroot, and quercetin, as well as bioprin. Now, all of these have some fantastic benefits. You know, L-glutamine, for example, it helps to actually restore our glutamine levels after periods of physical stress. There are so many benefits when it comes to that particular amino acid, but what I always think of when I think of L-glutamine is repair, repair, repair. We also have branch chain amino acids, so leucine, isoleucine, and valine. And the thing about branch chain amino acids is that, is that they do not have to be processed in the liver. They really aid in protein synthesis and really help support muscle growth. We have taurine, which is uh, it, it's actually a conditionally essential amino acid, and it helps to aid in recovery from exercise and then beetroot. So beetroot is one of those energy givers, right? So beets are such a great source of nitrate and nitrate is actually converted to nitric oxide. And what nitric oxide does is it is an oxygen carrier. It helps carry oxygen through our blood to our periphery so that we're able to move better. And it also carries oxygen to our brains so that we're able to think better. We also have nutrients like quercetin and zinc, you know, both of which have great antioxidant capacities. And, you know, quercetin in particular has actually been shown to help improve our oxygen uptake as well as our output. Now, one thing that you will find on our Athletes Fund is our informed sport guarantee. So this is something that is really there specifically for our professional athletes, but also for the, those of us that really want to ensure that what's in the product is just what's on the label there and nothing more. So Inform Sport is a quality assurance program for sports nutrition products, suppliers, um, and essentially it works with uh, Olympic committees as well as other professional sport committees to really um, support those that are looking for that holistic nutritional support without looking for any of the fillers, any of the stuff that might actually you know, mess up their systems or just not work as well with them. And then we've got our iron vegan bar. So our iron vegan sprouted bars, I mean, these are so great to pull, you know, on weekend adventures, bring camping, hiking. They come in four great tasting flavors. I know they sell out a lot. Um, the double chocolate brownie is probably my favorite, but honestly, they're all great. Um, they're very high in fiber as well as protein. So 16 grams of protein per, uh, per bar. So our key benefits and features, uh, 16 grams of protein, as I said, 17 grams of fiber and only four grams of sugar. So, I mean, really, I mean, it's such a great portable way to help fuel yourself. So again, bringing it back to the areas that we all need support in. For energy, we can really call on our balanced energy blend. For recovery, we have our rebound recovery as well as our athletes blend. And for our fuel, our sprouted protein and our sprouted protein bars. 
Now, there's so many different ways to really be using these products for balanced energy. I, like I said, you can mix it in your coffee, mix it with water. Other people will use it in different smoothie recipes or even dessert recipes. Uh, again, so many recipes that are available online for free for you to check out and just start incorporating. For our rebound recovery, again, very similarly, you can mix it in water, in a smoothie, or try it in something like a peach coconut pudding, cinnamon mango latte. Sprouted protein, again, is probably one of the ones that people use the most in recipes, whether it be something sweet, like these vegan salted caramel bars, or our vegan mac and cheese, something a little more savory. And for our athletes blend, I actually do love to use this one in my baking, whether it's banana bread or red velvet cookies that you see here, or overnight oats or even a smoothie. So as you can see, no matter what your goals may be, we can really all benefit from the support of plants. And Iron Vegan formulas really set you up for success, ensuring that you can feel the difference when incorporating our plant-powered blends. So thank you so much. Again, I do apologize that the main chat tonight was not working. Um, if you would like to connect with us further, definitely find us on our socials at My Iron Vegan. You can also find us at ironvegan.ca. Oh, perfect. So I do see that um, our question and answer has been going on behind the scenes. Thank you so much, Dr. Phil Zaswala. Uh, I'm glad that this was able to work for you. Good. It looks like there were some good questions that came through. If there are any more, I'll definitely stay on the line for, uh, for a little while longer. Otherwise, thank you again so much and thank you to Healthy Planet for hosting us tonight. Uh, we do have a special going on with, with Healthy Planet. I believe it is 20% off, so definitely check that out. Uh, but if you do have any more questions, feel free to type it into the question and answer box. The chat feature unfortunately is not working, but question and answer is. So feel free to post that there. Uh, and if not, have a great night and thank you so much for joining us.